ಹರಿಯಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌನ ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿತ್ವರ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ಸದ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಯೋಗೇನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪದೇನ ವಾಚ ಮಲ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತ ಪ್ರವರ ಮುನೀ ಪಾತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲೀನಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಹರಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಆಫ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಪಾದ ವಿವ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಸಾಧನ ಪಾದ and in sadhana pad also we have completed discussions on 28 sutras and now we have arrived at something which is directly relevant or practical for our sadhana everything was appearing fluffy so far because it was the philosophical background we studied sankhya tatva gnana to the extent required we studied the different stages of samadhi we studied transcendence of time and space we studied how do you move upwards in the realms of consciousness all this we did and patanjali maharaj told us that if you happen to be uch adhikari then all you need to do is abhyasa and vairagya the biggest problem is i do not know what type of adhikari i am the fact that you do not know what type of adhikari you are indicates that you are a lower adhikari neech adhikari mand adhikari why because the one who is practicing yoga for many many births we do not know how many over a period of practice of yoga when he has developed enough so that he can take the final assault whose restraint on the self tayyata tayyama is completed by studies and gets reborn such as a videha deva or even the one who is not a videha deva but has completed enough studies somehow he is poised for the last flight the final assault or the on the ascent and such a uch adhikari directly starts his study for the graduation for which he needs only abhyasa and vairagya because rest is done earlier in case somebody is born with not so much of study but definitely some study then he is a madhyama adhikari he is a secondary school student from madhyama he will become uch adhikari and then he will take the final ascent such a madhyama adhikari takes 
तपस एंड ईश्वर प्रणिधान द क्रिया योग एंड मूव फॉरवर्ड फॉर ऑल रेस्ट ऑफ अस वी आर मंद अधिकारीज दोज हू हैव नॉट येट सॉट एडमिशन इन प्राइमरी स्कूल or those who have already been in primary school but have just completed the first standard of the primary school or the second standard of the primary school or the third standard of the primary school they are all still considered as mand adhikari we saw in detail abhyas and vairagya types of vairagya what exactly abhyas means all in samadhi pad the study required for uchcha adhikari we saw kriya yoga as the beginning of sadhana pad meant for the madhyam adhikari and now we have come to mand adhikari and its preparation required and that is where now the direct relevance starts what am i supposed to do as sadhana what if i want to be on the path of yoga what should i be doing that is what is coming now for which patanjali maharaj says the famous sutra because of which the patanjali yoga sutra became ashtanga yoga that ashtanga the eight facets of yogaanga mind well when we say anga it means it has अंग अंगी संबंध माय हैंड माय फीट माय आईज माय इयर्स माय नोज ऑल दीज आर माय अंगाज आई एम द अंगी सो दे आर इनसेपरेबल दे फॉर्म व्हाट आई एम द संघात द कमिंग टुगेदर ऑफ डिफरेंट पार्ट्स इज फॉर्मिंग मी सिमिलरली अष्टांग योग is a ang all the eight things that are described cumulatively form yoga yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahar dharana dhyana samadhayo ashtavangani the eight angas meant for the mand adhikari mind well the angas are pretty difficult for us to do and yet it is called as manda adhikari this is to give an idea that the journey is not as easy as one may contemplate now whether you consider it as easy or difficult the fact is that it has to be taken if one intends to get the kaivalyam we are going to see and study the yama niyamas in detail each one of them to understand each one of them properly so that we have a clear concept in the mind what precisely is yama what precisely is niyama so the precision of understanding is something which we will have to inculcate in our mind before undertaking the journey but before understanding the ashtangas we need to understand how is it that patanjali maharaj came with this eight angas why not nine why not seven why not something different why only yama niyama why in that sequence this why has more importance mind well we all have faith in adhyatma bhagavad gita we have faith upanishad why because guru dev told us that they are the ultimate source of knowledge so we all say vedas are ultimate source of knowledge engineering is required for building a bridge we believe it when we are in school only when you become engineer you realize oh what is the relationship between qualified engineer and a bridge making similarly yama niyamas we all know and we believe yeah patanjali maharaj has given it that means it must be something which is very essential but mere blind 
belief in what is told in the sutras is not what hindu religion or the scriptures tell us there is a need to reason it out why only eight why only this on what basis he came out with this idea that means the philosophical base of ashtanga yoga needs to be understood very clearly in the mind so that we not only get convinced about the eight angas but we feel proud of the fact that how beautifully our elder rishis have analyzed the human mind and come out with the solution mind well since the beginning of yoga shastra study one thing that has really crystallized in our thinking is it is the mind mind and mind that is being studied the problem the issue the sorrow the pain whatever is because of mind the way to get rid of this is through mind the creation of this world is through mind so it is the mind that has brought us into trouble it is the mind that will get us out of the trouble to get into the trouble we have gone through the mind and to get out of the trouble we will have to go through the mind so the central focus is not the body not the world not the pancha mahabhutas not the other jivas not the objects it is your own mind the whole yoga sutra is technique of minding the mind take care of the mind so that mind does not exist use the mind so that you can dissolve the mind so once it is clear that it is the mind on which we are going to work it becomes easier for us to understand the philosophical base of ashtanga yoga what is the philosophical base of ashtanga yoga let us think together how the mind works and it is easier to understand because it is analysis of our own mind of the mind of a mand adhikari if he is a mand why is called a adhikari we can't use a word dull-witted intelligent person it sounds oxymoron but still mand adhikari why because there are those who are mand but not aware that they are mand we are this 8 9 10 12 people who gather in the morning on every tuesday are few of the exceptional people who think that i must study what my mind is because somewhere all of you and me we think that something is wrong something is amiss with the mind or with my life i must at least know what my elders my rishis my dhiras are telling me so those who are convinced about the futility of the world and our participation in the world a thought comes to the mind that there must be something wrong with me or my mind and this gives us the title of adhikari however we are not knowledgeable people that is why we are mand so we are adhikari and we are mand so even though we are mand adhikari we have a right now because of the awareness that we have what is the problem with my mind 
as a student of yoga shastra i am convinced that the problem is only mind nothing else the whole creation is lord's creation that has nothing to do with anything going wrong if he has produced it it can't be wrong in fact i am also part of it even my mind is also part of his creation but something has gone wrong with my perception with my mind and that is why the issue is there because my hand cannot perceive so nothing can go wrong with the hand the hand poor fellow is supposed to go and grab a thing it always grabs a thing it never deviates from its function my feet are supposed to take me somewhere walk on the road they do that even till the time i alive they do their job they never deviate my eyes are supposed to see they always see they don't deviate the deviation occurs only in the mind all human beings walk commonality but all human beings do not think in the same way that means the differentiating thing the thing that is going in a different way the thing that is flexible the thing that varies the thing that performs in a different different manner is mind once this is clear to us then it is easier for us now to proceed further to for the understanding of philosophical basis of ashtanga yoga now let us think together what is that we are doing with our mind in this world <clears throat> with our mind we are involved into this world every now and then except the time when we are sleeping we are constantly involved in this world with object or other subjects either we are watching tv or reading bhagavad gita or talking to wife or uh, taking the dog in the hand and trying to pat the dog or eating or holding on to some object or taking the fiance in the embrace or slapping somebody we are constantly interacting means our mind is constantly interacting with an object now look at our interaction with the object how is our interaction an object attracts our attention for any reason a beautiful lady walking on the road immediately we turn our neck what happened the mind thinks that that is an attractive object and then you look towards her now what happened why did you do that because you thought this is something which i like similarly an obnoxious person is going on the road one whom you don't like you take away your sight from there why because you don't like that person so either you are putting your attention on an object or you are taking away your attention from that object now when you are putting it on an object what happens you put it on that object for how much time let us say you are watching serial how long you will watch a serial one is that the serial will end it might be a movie maybe 3 hours a longer movie 5 hours two movies together 6 hours and then then you come out of it do we watch movie for months no do we eat for 10 hours no that means everything that we interact is for shorter period and then what we do we get fed up with that thing we shift our focus to another object we are just simply analyzing our behavior the way we interact in this world let us say we go for work to the office i am a very workaholic person what do we do in the office let us be honest 9:30 or whatever time we enter the office till i leave i was immersed in the work i didn't think anything else i was only thinking of accounts or whatever function i was doing does that happen no moment you go to the office first thing is you want a cup of tea on the way you will talk to somebody how are you what is happening what happened that thing oh too much of covid corona this what is happening 
you are shifting from one object or one interaction to another interaction to third interaction there is a flitting of mind as far as interaction is concerned that means we have only one problem and what is that the problem is we take interest in one thing at a time but do not take sufficient interest in one thing at a time both in terms of depth and the length see this is the beauty of the whole world the world that you have around you is meant for your liberation or bondage both it is the same thing that liberates you and it is the same thing that bonds bondages you that which is binding and that which is releasing is the same thing same mind same object can liberate you same mind same object can bind you how is it possible and that possibility is like this what do you do in meditation you take an object from where the object is taken from this world only we call it as a murti an idol of our ishta devata ganapati maharaj or hanumanta or our bhagwan shri ram we name them that is a different thing but what is it it is either clay terracotta or metal some some shape is given like a human being or whatever all right that is this is a decorative part of that object but basically it is an object now what has happened if that is an object then a food is an also an object a lady is also an object everything is an object for that matter you develop a relationship as young old beautiful not beautiful um, seducing non seducing these are all your own variations actually speaking all are objects the murti is also object the lady is also an object now what is the difference in meditation you take an object and do what you interact with an object then what is the difference in normal interaction with objects the first difference is you continue the interaction with that object for a very long time very long time and second you think of that object so much that you don't think of anything else whenever you think of an object for a sufficiently long time and with a depth that nothing no other object is interfering with this concentration of this object meditation happens and when these two things are absent our world happens see maraj it is very simple psychological and philosophical understanding how yama niyamas are evolved now in order to develop an ability to focus on one object for a sufficiently long time and with the sufficient depth the same object then becomes cause of your liberation same object when focused for a short time and not to the sufficient depth then it becomes object of bondage when i think of an object i am putting my consciousness on that object but i am not putting my consciousness on that object for sufficiently long time because of which what happens what am i looking for what everybody is looking for in this world everybody is looking for anandam bliss everybody is doing something or the other for what ask a common question you got married your children you doing job you are having a car you are in all this for what and the answer is i want to gain happiness i own a car for why happiness i feel by owning a car i will get happiness 
after owning the car i realized it is no more giving me happiness so i will think i'm not not the car uh, maybe a, a very big sprawling bungalow i shift their object so i am shifting my objects because no object is giving me the happiness that i desire but the fact is i am desiring happiness that is why i am trying to own an object this is my family why do i say so because i feel i have these objects and i my apologies for calling all the family members also as objects because there is nothing else that we treat them in our mind at the back of the mind because we own them and they are going to give me happiness this is what the relationship i establish in the family as a family head if then i am going to have happiness first of all the reason why i am running after the happiness is simply because i am atman my own nature my own nature itself is happiness because of conditioned mind i suddenly forgot that i am atman but my nature being of the atman i constantly hanker for happiness why is it that we don't try for sadness yeah i am trying little bit to become sad it doesn't happen actually the choice is both i want to have more pain can i get little more pain we don't say that why you have a choice the reason is a sun will ask for the light it cannot ask for the darkness because light is nature of the sun happiness is the nature of the soul that is why you will always ask for happiness second thing you always want to own something why you want to own something because you are owner of the entire thing in fact there is no one else you are the one who is the owner and if there is no second thing you cannot own anything because everything is you i will have handkerchief as my handkerchief when handkerchief is separate and i am separate but when i realize in a true sense that there is no differentiation whatsoever i am the only one my hankering for owning something will go currently my mind is conditioned in such a manner that i think these are all diversities away from me there is many ness in this world so i want to have one two three four as many as much as possible much more much more much more why because my own nature is pushing me to own everything my own nature is pushing me to become happy unfortunately since i do not know how to become a happy i am constantly struggling to get like a bee hovering on different flowers i am trying to touch the nectar at every place but i am a nectar myself if this is the case then patanjali maharaj studied all this and realized that the dosham the fault lies in the mind the fault lies in outwardness of the mind the fault lies in thinking that this is other and this is me the fault lies in the fact that this is the world and i am away from the world so the basic confusion that has arisen as the gist of all this issues is i consider myself as body i am so and so this is first problem since i am so and so that is the world is the second problem so i then the world and then my relationship with the world that is the basic issue which the yogis observed and that is why they were hell bent on breaking this vicious cycle of that world and me unless you break this vicious cycle you can't go inside and that is why 
this breaking of the you and your relationship with the world the presumption in the mind that i am different world is different world is meant for my happiness this presumption is what what is considered for mand adhikari so the mand adhikari is trained or needs to be trained to forget this for which they came out with the best possible solution and they realize that okay such a person if he is given 80 instruments he shall be fit to dissolve this kind of relationship and get into the antar pravas so now what is important the objects in the world has nothing wrong into it because it's all created by the lord we are unnecessarily blaming the world the fault lies in my mind in visualizing the world the world is not at fault that means i have perceived the world in a wicked manner the world is not wicked it is my mind which has projected a different world than the world actually is if lord has created the world how it can be full of pain and misery it cannot be why because creation of world is nothing else but the shakti pradarshan of bhagwan himself and if what can come into the effect other than the cause if the cause is shad aishwarya yukta then the world also is shad aishwarya yukta ishwara is klesha rahita we have already seen the definition of who is ishwara klesha rahita if ishwara is a klesh raita his creation how it can be with klesh what how klesh can come into something when it is not into the original thing but i find the world to be full of klesh that means i have perceived the world in a different way in other words i have created the world through my mind as a separate world that means what i have created as world is not the real world then what it is it is a false world and a false world is illusion i call it as my world but it is not the real world that means the jagat created by ishwara jagadishwara for the jeevas is a different thing than the world created by me as a bonded man bandh yukta man now how do i see that world which is the real world and come out of this distorted world of mine the solution given is the object in the world is not distorted the vision of the object is distorted object in the world is pancha mahabhuta pancha mahabhuta is not distorted pancha mahabhuta's relationship is distorted by the mind see try to understand this subtle difference the mall the mountains the stone the tree the animals that's not distorted my vision of the mountain my vision of the river i don't like that river i don't i feel scared of tall mountains i am not fond of trees this is my distorted vision the tree doesn't come to ask you do you like me or sir or not no likes and dislikes created by mind have distorted the vision of the world let us take example of the dirt that is lying on the road the fecal matter we immediately say oh ag this is all dirty there is nothing dirty in this world the dirt is also pancha mahabhuta i think it is dirty and oh so beautiful everything is beautiful why only this distorted vision once this is clear to me then how do i correct the distortion of mind that means first distorted mind has to be made a healthy mind 
and in this process the distortions are to be create are to be cleared first and the seeds of distortions are to be cleared later let us take an example every single lady on the earth other than your wife is your sister okay but i am not able to control myself and then i think with a bhoga vasana to a lady and then i commit an act which is abominable which is not good so what i will do i will have to restrain myself from doing anything to any other lady or molestation so what i have done i have restrained myself so on an obvious level of action i have refrained from doing it but what about the seed or the thought that a lady is something beautiful that thought which is in the mind today the law prevents you from doing anything to a lady but nothing prevents you from thinking it in the mind because even your wife will not come to know about it that thought which you can have is called the seed so what we have to do first the obvious action has to be curtailed then the seed has to be extricated once the seed is gone every lady will be nothing else but consciousness this removal of seed is called removal of samskaras when did this samskara came about this bhoga and upabhoga many many births back it is deeply rooted so deeply rooted that vishwamitra maharaj after doing such a great penance the menaka came and everything got disturbed in spite of tapas and austerity why did it happen the seed was still lurking in the head the samskara was not extra- extracted so what do you do first you undertake obvious manifestation of your wrong doings are to be controlled then you go for complete ablation or removal of the samskaras of those absurdities so when you do obvious things we are into ashtanga yoga then when we go to the seed or the causative factor then suppose your tunic your shirt is dirty why it is constantly going in the dirt so what do you do first you stop it from going to the dirt so that no new new dirt comes then what about the dirt which has already accumulated then you wash it and make it white the first is restraint and second is cleaning the cleaning is for madhya adhikari and uchcha adhikari restraint is for mand adhikari once you are not going into a pub there is no question of drinking alcohol but already i have drank alcohol and my liver is affected you have to work on it that you will work in the hospital hospital is not the place where you will again have alcohol so not going to the pub restrain making the liver better in the hospital madhyam and uchcha adhikari kriya yoga and abhyasa vairagya so this is the system or this is the philosophical base which is used by the rushis in understanding the yama and niyama this is what precisely even bhagavad gita is saying see let us not forget that yoga sutra is different bhagavad gita is different upanishad is different advaita is different no sir vipra bahuda vadanti ekam satya in bhagavad gita itself this understanding as that is an object i must enjoy an object is all called a lower understanding or the lower knowledge lower knowledge makes me involved into the objects so first of all i get involved into different objects 
one and i do not remain interested in one object i keep shifting from object to object so there are two aspects to me what is the aspect one is getting interested into the object why because i think object is real the object is nothing else but extension of consciousness i am a consciousness object is consciousness thousand times we have heard isha vasi upanishad now sarvatram ekatvam anupashyati i am the consciousness i am looking towards the consciousness but actually what is happening all that remains in the books because moment we finish this satsang i am dr jadav that person is so and so she is my wife that means we are coming into a thing where we think these things are real wife is a real car is real we don't see consciousness in the car we say car is also consciousness saying this different thing but we don't feel it there is no experience of any kind saying consciousness everywhere why is it so because of our lower knowledge this is called lower knowledge that is an object now this lower knowledge is called tamas so any object a handkerchief is an object this object is real it is called handkerchief and it i must possess it this is called tamas now i don't have any use for this handkerchief so what i do i drop the handkerchief and catch hold of another object what happened i shifted from this object to another object continuous inclination of mind to shift from one object to another object is rajas so the lower knowledge deals with tamas and rajas in bhagavad gita 18th adhyay 22nd shloka says yat tu krutsnavat ekasmin karye asaktam hetukam तत्वार्थवत अल्पमच तत तामसम सम उदाहृतम भगवत गीता इज टेलिंग अस व्हाट इज तमस यत्तु कृष्णवत एकस्मिन कार्ये असक्तम हेतुकम व्हेन यू आर असक्त अबाउट अ पर्टिकुलर ऑब्जेक्ट एंड देन डील विद दैट ऑब्जेक्ट एज इफ इट इज रियल दैट इज कॉल्ड तमस see the beautiful definition of tamas that is what precisely patanjali maharaj is saying that means every object in this world can have two functions what is this either you will go for enjoyment and bondage but the same object can be used for experience and liberation yes this is an object called handkerchief i can use it for enjoyment what is the enjoyment utility i will use it for wiping the face or i can use this object for concentration and through this i can experience liberation every single object in lord's creation leads you to bondage and the same object can lead you to liberation it is just that our mind is stupid we have to carve an object in the form of bhagwan shri ram it is our convenience but a plain stone also is enough for us provided we have the ability to concentrate on that particular object on a continued basis at a required depth in fact all our enjoyments in our day to day life is nothing else but concentration that we are doing unfortunately for a very short time a cup of coffee gives us pleasure otherwise why will you drink it unfortunately we do it for a very short time at a very short depth so the enjoyment happiness which we are getting is also limited to a short thing everything is short short it is not that tv serial doesn't give you happiness it does some man there called tendulkar or whatever his name he is making a century i feel very happy that act is making me happy otherwise i will not watch cricket the world cup final happened people were geared up 11 o'clock in the night in all inconvenience and all that and then they are glued to the tv and oh my god he was almost about to make a goal see enjoyment was there 
unfortunately what happened the match ended and the enjoyment ended so what we do in our normal life and what a yogi does in his life they are not technically they are different acts are same maybe you are taking a football match as your means of enjoyment while a yogi says i will take the tip of nose you keep watching the match he keeps watching the tip of the nose the difference lies in the fact that your match ends in 1 hour his tip of nose never ends second when you are watching the match a part of your attention you are giving there you are not having a deep attention there deep focus there while a yogi has a complete focus as a result you see the partial unveiling of an object while a yogi when he is looking at an object because he does it at a required depth and a sufficient period of time he is able to uncover the object so what we do is we go into the water to swim but only on the upper layer we swim and come out a yogi goes into the same water but goes to the depth of the water and remains there for a longer time so he understands the water in its entirety that means the object and its true nature is only revealed to the yogi while we just touch the surface and come out so the gist is objects in the world can be a cause of bondage or the same object can be object of liberation that is first part second is in the same sadhana path drushyam was defined as bhog apavarga we have already studied it bhoga apavargartham drushyam that is the definition of drushya see the deep meaning in that sutra bhog apavargartham drushyam drushyam means objects world world is meant for bhog apavarga that means enjoyment and bondage or experience and liberation so this is first of all the basic philosophical aspect of understanding what is the logical conclusion of this desire when caught in diversity is bondage when it is concentrated it is a means of liberation who says the yogi who is sitting in meditation doesn't have desire he has a desire of samadhi desire is there but there is only one desire gurudeva had desire only one desire what atmajnanam when the desire is multifold and is involved into the manyness of this world of the diversity it becomes the cause of bondage while when desire is one focused on one intention or object or subject the same desire becomes cause of liberation means what that means what we should be doing for the liberation all we need to do is have the desire focused or concentrated on one not on many that means we have to limit our desire upon our chosen ideal and change our mode of behavior type of conduct and way of living to achieve the concentration of desire this change of mode of behavior or the type of conduct or the way of living is ashtanga yoga yama niyama the yama and the niyam part first two parts are focusing on that the distracted mind focusing on multiple objects in a flitting manner creating ephemeral effect of happiness needs to be controlled first so first is yama niyama now all the discussion has come to a 
word called self control that means you have to control yourself control self control but the problem is self control when you say self and control control is understood but how can self be controlled because self is atman self is absolute self that doesn't require control because it is the only one only one cannot control because control means somebody has to control something when self itself is one how can there be self control because self is our goal then what is self control the same self when it is apparently divided into the world myself and the self the self gets divided into three first self is absolute self the true self which is me as well as world as well everything is self that is first self absolute self that is our aim goal kaivalyam purusha purusha khyati that is absolute self then what is wrong self or distorted self which we have the distorted self is this is the world that is called external self what is this tree the mountain pradeep ji himanshu ji who are they they are self only consciousness only but i don't consider them i consider them as external that means they are self but external and what about me uh, i am my body i am separate they are external self then what is this this is personal self personal self me jeeva jagat external self and jagadishwar absolute self we have in our mind clear cut compartmentalization think we never think these three as one because we are conditioned not by one birth multiple births not only conditioned we have got sahaja avastha we work we function in this manner we function every day as if i am separate everything else is separate my wife is separate my child is separate my office my money my bungalow my 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 means i have already separated them that which is not me is external self that which thinks me is personal self and none of these selves are true because these two are also a part of only one self which is absolute self if once this is clear it will be easier for us to understand what is the role of yama niyama in order to dissolve the feeling that this is external self yamas are created you look at yama ahimsa satya asateya aparigraha brahmacharya the panch yamas are meant for dissolving this external self do not harm anybody ahimsa why they are not external they are you how can you harm yourself so the whole yama is to dissolve the external self what about personal self niyama yama for external self yama for dissolving the concept that this is the world niyama for dissolving the personal self that i am the body and then rest everything pranayama and onwards is to realize that absolute self that means first you withdraw from the concept that this is world then you withdraw from the concept that i am the body and then go on the onward march to know who i am external self to personal self to absolute self is the reason why ashtanga yoga has been proposed and propounded and that is why in this world if you do extremes that is not yoga for example oh i eat in this world from tomorrow onwards i will start fasting because this world is worldly things are bad so i will just start fasting because i am not doing anything that is done in the world food is now avoided 
that is called extreme action in dissolving the external self or the world and mind well many people do that and not many people even gautam buddha did it when he went for out of his palace and he was roaming wandering in the jungle to know the self to have self realization he realized that yeah, i must fast so much he fasted there is a beautiful photograph i mean painting of buddha of was, you know those monks where buddha is shown with all the ribs can be seen because he was so emaciated that he fell unconscious and then a shepherd's daughter called sujata came and gave little milk to buddha and then buddha became all right and then he started thinking extreme is not the way to go about it then what is the way to go about it moderation so yoga is restraining yourself to dissolve the external self and the personal self the jagat and the concept that i as the body but while doing these things extremes should be avoided that is the reason asana is called a sukhasana i am having tremendous pain in the body and i am doing yoga it cannot be yoga because pain and yoga doesn't go together yoga is evolving the personality in a manner whereby more and more happiness starts coming to you so if it is painful procedure it it is difficult understood but if it is painful that means something is wrong we are going for extremes so subjecting to pain is not yoga the object is to develop healthy happy state and not painful or a resentful state and then why go to yoga shastra our own bhagavad gita is telling us the same thing in sixth adhyaya na ati ashnastu yoga asti eating too much is not yoga na cha ekantam anashnatah not eating at all is also not yoga na cha ati swapna shilasya always sleeping too much is not yoga jagrato naiva charjuna i am awake all the time that is not yoga everything has to be in moderation that is why yukta ahara viharasya yukta chestasya karmasu yukta swapna va bodhasya yogi bhavati dukha yogi is always away from pain because he follows moderation this is another thing how do you get this moderation is inculcated through ashtanga yoga so the pain destroying yoga dukha is possible only through moderation and moderation is to be understood by understanding correctly the circumstances that you are in because moderation principles are flexible for example ahimsa is a part of yama but i am the soldier working in indian army and i want to follow yoga no sir you are soldier you cannot follow it why because you will kill the enemy not so in the given set of circumstances the himsa that he is doing is also a himsa because in the set of the circumstances he is killing an enemy for the sake of the nation is not considered as a himsa but if the same soldier comes home and kills the neighbor it is himsa what happened set of circumstances are different in different situation so first important thing and a difficult task is to know what is my set of circumstances and then understand what my yama niyamas are so first is circumstantial relational yama niyamas after you reach a particular height then circumstances do not matter yama niyamas only matter even if you are in any circumstances a yogi which has reached the highest level will not harm even the air naneshwar maharaj in his 
commentary of Gnaneshwari says that a yogi does not use his hand forcefully because the nails of his hand might tear the air. Look at the subtlety, look at the level at which the ahimsa is gone. But that is at a ucha, a particular level. Till that time, circumstantial. So that is why moderation in relation to the circumstances in order to restrain yourself, the self that is distorted as external self and personal self is the first preparatory exercise. And this preparatory exercise is what we call as Ashtanga Yoga Yama Niyama is what we are going to study. The externalized self, that is the world that we perceive is called Gauna Atma. The personal self or the me as a body is called Mithyatma. So we have to reduce Gauna Atma, Mithyatma and then go towards the Atma. Or we have to change our relationship with the world, then with myself and then find out the real relationship. And this is the way of Yama and Niyama. Yama is an ethical foundation. Yama is moral and prohibitive. Don't do, don't do, don't do, no this, not this, not this is Yama. And it is in relation with the world. All the Yamas that we are going to study, whether it is Ayusa, Satya, you, you cannot speak Satya to yourself. You are anyway Satya to, because you know what you are. Satya is in relation to others. So it is for the external self. Your relationship behavior with the world is first purified. Then you yourself need to be purified. Purifying your relationship with the world is Yama. Purifying yourself is Niyama. So the one who is interested in Yoga Shastra, he should start from Yama, which is moral and prohibitive. Niyama is disciplinary and constructive. Yama is ethical foundation, ethics. Niyama is organizing one's own life. Another thing is, Yama can be practiced only when the opportunity is there. For example, I am alone in the jungle meditating. Where is the question of Ahimsa? I am not interacting with anybody. That means I, I must speak truth, Satya. But there should be somebody to speak, no? That means Yama is opportunistic. When the opportunity is there, whenever the interaction with the world is there, Yama will come. But what about Niyama? Niyama is always there because it is for yourself and yourself will be always there. Even if you are in jungle, you will have to follow it. You have to practice it. After understanding so much of background, why these Yama, Niyama, Ashtanga, Yoga, how beautifully they have been put on a philosophical basis, it will become easier for us to understand what is Yama, Niyama. So with this philosophical understanding, from next session, we will start Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. We will see each of them. We will see their subtypes because every one of them is something which is meant for us. Asampradhyat Samadhi, not meant for us. Why? Not qualified. Right now, the primary schooling syllabus is going on, which is directly related to us. So far, we saw secondary school and graduation, Uchcha Adhikari and Madhya Adhikari. That was a theoretical information as of now. Because even if I wish, I cannot practice Kriya Yoga. Why? I'm still not qualified. The very basic qualification starts with Ashtanga Yoga meant for Manda Adhikari. That is why we will see each of them in a proper perspective. And the idea is not to become a Pandit in Ashtanga Yoga, but to see that it applies to our day-to-day -day life. And then we can actually check ourselves. You can have a checkbox. Yama, Niyama. Yama is meant for my relationship with the world. Every time now you go to office, you talk to your family, you talk to, you always say, ah, Ayusa, oh my God, I just spoke in anger to somebody, Ayusa is disturbed. 
and then the boss said that when will you give me the file i have been telling you sir by actually yesterday what happened i was to give it asatya immediately second and then you are coming home and suddenly what happened is a beautiful girl was walking and uh, brahmachari is gone and then on the way i realized that this new model of this phone should come to me aparigraha and then you know, as you know everybody is getting this thing so let me just go and do little psycho fancy with my boss so that i can get extra promotion asateya that is how a constant backdrop of this yamas will start then hounding us making us better and better adhikari then from manda adhikari we will start our march towards madhyam adhikari ariyo o ೂರ್ಣಮದೂರ್ಣಮುದ್ಚತೆಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಸಂಜಯ್ ವೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಸಾಧಕ್ ಸರ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸಂಜಯ್ ಜಿ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ರಿಯಲಿ moving away from the world and then the self and then uh, you know towards that i just want to ask you know when we refer to ashtanga yoga ashta is the eight uh limb so it is primarily i'm saying so the first two are yam niyam and then like you said right for the manda adhikari and then uh, uchcha adhikari and then we move upwards now typically uh you know you'll hear a lot of uh, I, i presume they're all a commercial this thing when you know somebody says i follow ashtanga yoga or i do vinyasa yoga or i do uh, you know so uh, are they purely i mean you know commercial definitions or uh, you know is there something more like say for example vinyasa which is a continuous flow of uh you know so is that part of uh, is it like a description of the asan that we do i just In want fact, a little clarification on that what studying is the patanjali ashtanga yoga sutra is what we are studying now it is an all encompassing thing some of the adepts or the yogis have picked up certain aspects of it and popularized it more in their sadhana for example the, uh, the the book that was made famous autobiography of yogi the focus yeah. of the which is called as bihar or you know bihar the hmm. in yoga the focus is more on kriya yoga now when you talk about kriya yoga it is doesn't mean that they are ignoring other parts kriya yoga is for madhyam adhikari but then what has happened is it is like somebody is directly put into a secondary school what will happen he will fail so what he will do he will sit in the secondary school but first study the primary and then qualify where he is sitting so there are some people like vinyasa is basically again when you focus more on the only concentration aspect of it meditative aspect of it you have already crossed yama niyama and gone towards concentration but the fact is although everybody has picked bits and pieces and popularized it further some of them in a true sense some of them completely commercially we have no connection with commercial connection of any anything all those so called hot yoga tub yoga and which this these are all stupidities of highest order the yoga that is being practiced outside is only a fractional aspect of asanas that are taught that has very little only purak rechak kumbhak what they are trying to say how deep it is we will come to know when we will study pranayama what it is what is pranasya ayamaha is a very elaborate subject 
some people have taken part of it tried to popularize it commercially just leave them non commercially some of the adepts have taken some parts and pieces and popularized it but again what is important is somebody can make you teach directly entering into the fourth standard so he packs up the syllabus of all three standards and teaches you and makes you appear directly for fourth standard examination there are aspects of this kind available but we must understand the most appropriate way of studying and practicing yoga is understanding patanjali maharaj's original yoga sutra in proper manner even the adepts in hatha yoga they also mention that hatha yoga is preparatory for raja yoga mind well highest aspect of patanjali yoga sutra is abhyas and vairagya so uchcha adhikari whatever he does is normally referred to as raja yoga the lower yama niyama when, when they are hardened into with a focus on the body it becomes hatha yoga so hatha yoga is a foundation now hatha yoga is not a commercial aspect it is a true aspect but it is a dwarf aspect of a real yoga that is why when vivekananda was asked about hatha yoga he said i do not think there is anybody in this world at the moment in kali yoga or the current yoga that anybody can practice hatha yoga to the perfection this question was asked to him by hari bhai in london and he replied that hatha yoga is not that easy there is hardly anyone who can practice in these days so hatha yoga is part of it foundation of it basic part of it but it ultimately has to move towards this so that is how different yoga are developed sticking to the original one is what we shall focus upon hari yoga dilip ji uh hari om sanjay ji thanks for the uh Uh, wonderful explanation of this day after your gate uh listening to your uh, uh, discourse i felt like i should com- completely comply with that then the life will be be- beautiful or you get the a part of a, like a bliss blissful environment you know. but a uh, lot of questions came up in my mind i don't know how to put it in sequence but uh, uh, to put it in this uh, way uh now we are uh, uh, there are you mentioned about uh, distortion to be cleared first and peaks of distortion to be cleared second that is the structure of the growth i mean evolving evolving or whatever it is but uh, as we see when we are uh, going to the school initially there are children who enjoy going to their school and there are some people children reluctant to enter into the school initially but over a period of time these reluctant people becomes toppers and the other people other children they become they are not performing that well similarly uh, i mean there should be some reason for that and that secondly now this uh, the 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 structures the uh, vasanas you are you have mentioned how to avoid and how to detach from and all those things in this world of plurality where we are living in a environment is it easily possible now i, I have experienced that if i am in uh, uttarkashi or sidbari your concentration is only on some particular things like a uh, dog or some flower or the beautiful mountain you are totally detached because you are not getting into any other environment but you know what happened that now i am talking about my experience now if you look at some i used to go for land with some my european colleagues there what happens is that the road is empty there is a signal for pedestrians it shows red they say i said okay there is no vehicle this vehicle will not come for the next 10 minutes and the hot sun we can just walk across no i immediately said i am a european the signal is put for, for some purpose you have to obey now they are for them it is coming spontaneous like they don't walk on the grass which is planted on that we walk on the grass irrespective of whatever knowledge is this potentially or whatever good will we have in our mind we still have the temptation to walk on the grass but the europeans they never walk on the grass they always obeyed by the law spontaneously we obeyed the law because of the fear 
now i remember i was watching along with my father in the childhood whenever there is a crowd or some fight is taking place or some unnatural things happening we i used to concentrate he said why you are looking on that our mission is different here now if you are driving on the road you are meeting you are seeing an accident taking accident has taken place there's a crowd and there's some injury and all you are tempted to see a feel pity for that and you uh, on the side we are getting fired for the rubber knife or whatever the police have it is called now all those things are compelling you are forcing ourselves from deviating from that by doing by following this is it possible to have this kind of uh, detachment in the plurality of the current world uh, current place we are staying rather i would must say is it possible that is what uh, my question sir you see one thing we need to understand that whenever we are doing something which is not expected to be done the reason you will always see that whatever you did you just obeyed what came to your mind and did not think about what came to the mind let us take an example of walking on the grass the thought that should i be walking or shouldn't i be walking on the grass which is so beautifully manicured is thought that never comes to us we do the act first and don't think at all or think later the yoga teaches us that thinking has to be first action has to be later this mismanagement is something which has to be consciously reversed let us take example when you are now going on the road and there is an accident happening what happens the mind immediately tends to go and watch what is happening there why because your mind is trained for that you have been doing wrong things for a very long time that european has been following right thing for a very long time so he goes by his samskaras you are going by your samskaras so what is most important is changing the samskaras how do you change the samskaras first you should think about what samskaras you have and that is called introspection for example i have a very sweet tooth at least you must be aware that you have sweet tooth then only you will stop eating sweets so sweet tooth will naturally compel you to eat now what happens from tomorrow onwards i shall not be touching sweets that is not possible sir it can never happen why you went to the extreme we just spoke about moderation so what do you do what you do is called parisankhya vidhi we are going to see that what is parisankhya vidhi a smoker comes and tells a doctor sir i smoke 20 cigarettes a day the doctor says no no please stop it from tomorrow it will never happen it never happens so what is parisankhya vidhi all right you smoke 10 from tomorrow don't smoke 20 what happened 20 became 10 so you get used to 10 now not 20 this is called parisankhya vidhi in our yama niyama also we do the same thing uh, i am reading bhagavad gita for how much time uh, no not at all sir i am not reading at all every day then from tomorrow you at least you spend 2 hours early morning on bhagavad gita it will never happen why from 0 to 2 hours not possible so do what every morning i will study only one shloka and try to by heart one fourth of one shloka i will by heart now it will be better why parisankhya vidhi so that is why the whole process is of that type so when we are talking about detachment tomorrow morning it will not happen sir you don't expect it if you are a drunkard you will it is not that tomorrow morning you will stop drinking alcohol everything goes sequentially slowly dheere 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 re mana dheere sab kuch hoy mali sinche sav ghada rutu aaye phal hoy even if you water very next day the flower will not come it will take time to to give the flower similarly but every day should be an act of forward movement and how do you do that fill your bag with good things automatically there is no space for bad things how do you fill your bag with good things that is what precisely guruji is now talking what is swadhyaya swadhyaya is filling your bag with good things 
then what happens early morning while brushing i am thinking of how to get rid of that stupid fellow in my office instead of that what i will do while brushing i will think about the shloka that i am trying to by heart what happened you replaced bad with good this is swadhyaya so parisankhya vidhi swadhyaya that is how we are going to study yama niyama very slowly because they are directly applicable at our level for our sadhana hari om